Well, I've obviously had a pretty eventful journey, um, going all the way from uh, cabinet minister, disgraced politician, jailed prisoner, and now prison chaplain. That's a trajectory which not many people, indeed, I don't think almost anybody has ever had. And I don't think I deserve any credit for this. I certainly didn't plan it. I haven't worked for it. I just put it all down to the amazing mercy and forgiveness of grace of God that somehow this has happened. Um, and uh, the question is what to do with it. And the answer is a life of service. Well, I was ordained about 12 days ago by the Bishop of London at St. Paul's Cathedral. It was a magnificent, splendid and sacred service. But of course the purpose of it is to go out and serve the Lord as an ordained minister. And I'm aiming to specialise in prison ministry because that's where my heart is and that's what I feel I'm called to do. But I will help out with my local church. I've already preached there once as a deacon and will go on doing so. And I will continue, as I've been doing really for some years, to do various kinds of prison ministry and also various kinds of outreach ministry, go all over the place just uh, preaching the gospel or giving a testimony talk, whatever it may be. But the whole concept, the whole plan is to serve the Lord. And if you ask me why did I get ordained, I think I'd have to say, well, it's a bit of a mystery. There's an old Anglican hymn which goes, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. And I'm certainly wondering and surprised why I'm suddenly the Reverend Jonathan Aitken. Uh, I've been called many things, but I'm delighted now to be that. Uh, but I felt called, and the process was mysterious. I felt that really God was talking to me and saying, I want you in the prisons. Uh, and so after a certain amount of hesitation and saying very politely, please God, no, I, I then said, okay, God, yes. And I let my name go forward and I was accepted for ordination about a year ago. Prison is a surprisingly dog-collar friendly environment. Um, prisoners actually like to talk to people who they know might be willing to listen to them, to ease some of their fears, uh, not just in the chapel, although that's part of it, but really on the wings. And if you're doing prison ministry, as I have been for some years, people often have very worrying problems, which can range to from threaten suicide and threaten self-harm to just terrible family worries. And they need to hear a loving Christian message, perhaps. But above all, I think they need um, what we call pastoral care. And I've enjoyed doing that for years. If you're uh, an ordained minister, well, you have greater access to various parts of the prison. The prisoners themselves welcome you. Um, I hadn't ex expected to be addressed as father, but that's what actually all prisoners do call chaplains. It's the sort of common lingua franca of prisons. They also very often call you Father Pi. And I was a bit baffled by this. So many people seem to be calling me the Pi or Father Pi, but this comes from prison rhyming slang. Uh, uh, pie and liquor equals vicar. And so that's why. <laughs> Uh, it's in the sort of prison slang that the chaplain is the pie or father pie. Anyway, I've been enjoying it. And there are certain special things you can do um, if you are in that particular area of faith. For example, some prisoners want to make confessions and only an ordained priest uh, can give absolution. And that can be very, very important at giving closure to a life of crime or a life of sin. So there are all kinds of specialist areas within prison ministry and I'm very pleased to be starting this new life, new career at the somewhat advanced age of 75, what might be called the aftercare of prisoners. Now this is fairly neglected too. There's a gap has opened up between God's chaplaincies in prison and God's churches outside prison. The two don't often seem to communicate, let alone cooperate. So there's a great opportunity for what might be called joined up prison and rehabilitation ministry. And I'm trying to start certain initiatives in that field.